Well, I'll tell you what. If you want something done right, send in Legacy. The uh, arguably the only uh, favorite to win to actually win today. Direwolf's order was a bit of a coin flip uh, about who was going to take that one out. But uh, but it looks like the power of Nick Boy could not carry Mammoth over Spawn. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you had a look at that game, that's just decisive. And sometimes the OPL just follows this path, Nick, where it's like everyone beats everyone, and then Chiefs and mm. Legacy just beat everyone. Uh, mm. And I think that that's what today is starting to look at. You know, we've got an 0-2 day for Pentanet. We've got a 1-1 way day for Direwolves. But all of a sudden, Legacy come in, take care of business. And if that is the case, it's bad news for Order because up next, Chiefs have got Order. And, I mean, if they are half as decisive as what Legacy were in that game, then that is also going to be a very tough affair. Absolutely. Skimmy, how are you holding up? Uh, it's an exhausting day. I think the, the main thing that drew... <laughs> drew uh, Drew, my energy I had to be the first, what, three or four games where I'm just like screaming, popping off, going, what am I watching? What am I casting? Um, the game mm -hmm. that we had, as Spore mentioned, yeah, a lot more clean and cut and to what we expected. So I've had plenty of water. I'm uh, definitely keeping hydrated. So keep that in mind. I did see someone in chat, uh, Rich Boy Streams, said, is someone sleeping in the bed behind Skimmy? I swear they just rolled off the edge. Can I you know. Confirm? I I. I messaged the guy back in Twitch chat. I was like, what are you on about? Because like, there was no one home and there's no way you can even get under the bed. So um, maybe too much orange juice for that guy. This is a little <laughs> bit of a scary OJ. story. <laughs> yeah, happened yeah. to a friend of mine. Andre Skimmy Allchins got danked in his bedroom one OPL. Yeah. Story. I can I'll imagine you Carbon what. doing something like that. I just like jumping into my room like, whoa. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. Like, you're in the of a just, those, crazy. just those long fingers appearing up. Like from underneath the desk, <laughs> grab you and pull you down, uh, and then he shows you the potato farm that he's that he's growing out back. Um, I, also, <laughs> skimming because you and I, you and I never have a chance to chat, right? Because obviously, we don't know. Spawn and Rusty are constantly getting to talk to you uh, during games, and you and I just have yes. to suffer our our nightly text message threads. Uh, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. The, uh, you did reference earlier the idea of washing liquid on the floor to make a home gym. And I'm just wondering yes. how successful that is. Is that a thing that you've done? <coughs> or is that just something where no. you started saying the word washing detergent and then you just went, well, I have to figure out how to finish the sentence? No, so <laughs> the thing the in thing my mind, I'm sure you've um, got your neck, is that I had to say a lot of things um i say literally anything and uh you know the thoughts come to my mind this quickly and as long as they're within my guidelines of the contract you know we run with that <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times after the games you go what on earth was that skinny why did you say that and i go well you know you do get that sometimes so there you have it there you have it spawn you were saying that all the gyms are sold out yeah, so at the moment, uh, I mean, I don't know if people in Twitch chat uh, actually have this problem or whether they can send me any, any plates, but we are looking for dumbbells, barbells, and plates for a home gym because uh, myself, Harry, Swiper, and Jordan uh, only go to gym every single morning together. It's like our routine and it mm -hmm. like is a really great way of like blowing off steam. It's a really great way to like actually just come together. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty stress. I carry my stress very heavily. Um, so I think that uh, that is a part of my life I'm really missing and we have been trying to buy stuff online for legitimately two weeks now and we just cannot find anything. Every time we submit an order, it goes through successfully and then it's like, oh yeah, by the way, we're out of stock so you can either wait three months or we'll give you a refund. It's like, give me a refund, you moron. The only reason I want this is for this. Rusty, surely you have something lying around the house. No, not at all. I, I move house way to have a single lying around to be honest um well i do like the idea of there being some viewer of the opl out there who's like you know what i've got 500 kilos worth of weights and heavy equipment that i'd be having to ship over to melbourne <laughs> we don't even need 500 that? like a couple of five kilo plates a couple of two and a half kilo plates like we've scrounged up some really old mangy stuff from my parents place it's got like rust and stuff on it hey we might need tetanus shots after doing the gym but uh we'll be okay have you considered just getting a, a strong metal pole and just getting rare and only to, and then that's just something that you could use? <laughs> no, Nick, for some reason that hadn't yet come to my mind, but you know what, now that okay, you well, that makes you, uh, that, that makes you a bad work. manager. Yeah, um, I apologize. 
Uh, we're about to lose Jake, I believe, as you are heading into the final draft of the day. But Rusty, how has uh, how has the first day of the uh, Super Week series that we have over the next few weeks felt for you? Uh, I mean, it's felt weird. I really, I mean, like results aside, it's it's weird to be at home. You know, we had this conversation before, but like so used to like when you go to work, you go. And so like now to just be at home has felt very different like adjusting to that does take some time so like as it's been definitely a more intimate experience i have i've still enjoyed it is what i would say um i am enjoying the fact that all of us have some sort of thing like either roommates or children that is stopping us from going a hundred percent to where we normally would vocally so i True. hear the three of you like build towards something and then it's either strained throat or like <laughs> you swallow it back down and divert the energy somewhere else and for me i'm like I'm in this room, but it shares the wall with my two-year-old who is asleep. And I'm like, I could, I could go here, but, uh, but if I hear crying, then this is done. I don't care if I get fired. I'm like leaving this room <laughs> because he cannot be awake no matter what. Uh, so it should be an interesting look over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Skimmy, arguably you're in the best position because you're in a house filled with people who work in video games. Yeah, no, I literally went outside before and Carbon was there watching the game, right? So um, I said to him, it was actually funny. We um, he, he turned on the stream on the TV out there and, and he was like, are you guys going to lag? It's going to be okay. And I was like, oh, it should be fine, right? We're like, we're on fiber. It should be okay. And then like halfway through one of those team fights, my screen just froze. And I just, I carried on commentating, hoping for the best. And then like when my screen caught up, it was just Tapoon in the bot lane just like farming away and i'm pretty sure i just finished. yeah and, and, and damage happens and they win the team fight and then like <laughs> rusty just carries on like nothing happened i'm like oh what a <laughs> great save, i want you mate. to know skimmy i want you to know that i lagged at the exact same oh, time you're choking, so it must not be up <laughs> so okay i completely just made it up that whole okay. time so i'm glad, I'm glad that you're like on the I same... covered you yeah, i'm glad <laughs> okay well i felt so bad well if some if someone in the chat can please let the casting team know what happened during that uh, part of the game, that would be greatly appreciated. But we do, of course, have one more game. Uh, it is Order versus Chiefs. I mean, arguably, this is Order versus Die Wars and Order versus Chiefs. These are the two uh, feature matches of the day, would we say, Rusty? Yeah, you could say that. I mean, it's the ones to watch, I think, the most. Uh, you know, like the Legacy game was definitely actually an important one because Legacy need to win every game to keep distance from the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, yeah, this is a big one. Like, if the Chiefs get their win, they continue on that road to take down Legacy and finish first. All right. Well, there's only one way to see who will finish first. This is uh, Order versus Chiefs, and it's coming up with the Mecca's Champ Select. When the difference between winning and losing is measured in milliseconds, everything counts. The Alienware Legendary Battle Station. Feeling the heat? Grab a pineapple or pineberry frozen Fanta mix at Macca's. With 36 flavours, it's the largest range in Australia. Grab one for only $1. A little goes a long way at Macca's. Final game of the week. Chiefs taking on order for what should be a fantastic showing to close out tonight's business. Much like Legacy in their first performance of the night, it's going to be the Chiefs also on order having a bit of a break between these games. So, a bit of time to study up, rinse and repeat, and sort of going down that gauntlet of taking on Direwolves and now going up against the Chiefs. Yeah, and it's been a little while since we've seen the Chiefs. You know, they're one of the teams that when you look at the, the top of the standings, they are actually a little bit behind. Uh, they've missed some games here and there, and, and it's very hard to actually monitor how things are going at the top of the tables. You know, who will finish first is a hard to answer question, quite specifically because the Chiefs are down some games in comparison to Legacy. So, you know, Legacy, and they won their last game. It looked convincing, a lot of things going promising for them. Now it's the Chiefs' turn to prove that we are still that top dog, right? And we're going to be able to smack order around and prove that we still need to be up there in that number one spot. So, order, obviously, with a lot to prove themselves off the back of a defeat, but you can see what's at stake for the Chiefs. 
Absolutely. And we're already going to see some adaptations come out in the draft here. You have to expect that Wukong is going to continue to get banned. And if it's let through, uh, we're going to have sort of multiple performances resembling that of uh, Advanced Dragku. But what's interesting for me is we've got the Callista ban and the Maokai. And Callista, we've uh, seen that as a bit of a sleeper rising agent. Yeah, Callista's existed as a solo laner for a while now. Uh, and what actually, like, these bans are perfect from Order because they're playing for chips. So, like, when you're playing against Order, you know that it's going to be tanks in top lane because that's what Swiper plays. Look at their bans. It's a set and it's a Maokai. Very specific ban on a Maokai because they want to pick the Orn. They've taken tanks from Swiper. Order have said Callista's a solo laner, Wukong's a new broken champion for carry players, and they've removed those away for themselves, respectively, maybe to get, like, an Aphelios Nautilus if they wanted. It's going to be a misfortune instead as their first rotation. Yeah, it's interesting to see that they're not going to decide to opt for the Aphelios there. Uh, obviously, the Orn is locked in place as well, and you start to wonder uh, if they even care about the fact that Misfortune uh, came in as that high priority. We know that Katsuri is so flexible and so strong on the you know the top three. Uh, most recently, they've been playing a ton of center time Kench, but I feel like in a situation like this, uh, yeah, stick to the standards, stick to the basics, and uh, Aphelios yeah. is a champion. He's incredibly strong at. I mean, Aphelios is just good. And at the same time, like it is curious that Order chose to go for the Misfortune over the Aphelios. I think it's just widely known that Aphelios is usually the better of the two, even though the percentage is perhaps low in terms of difference between them. Uh, and it's not just that, you know, you've got your Yumis, you've got your Senna's, both available to be picked right now, potentially as well. We've seen the Tarek, we've seen that well, this is also possible uh, into the likes of the Nautilus to try and survive. And the yep. route that the Chiefs are going to go is they're going to pick the Braum, Braum on dangerous combo. Given that order, have already revealed what their bot lane is. Uh, Chiefs aren't uh, aren't going to worry about uh, ch choosing their Solanes just yet. They're going to go for the Brahmas in response. Yeah, Obviously, very up. strong against the bullet time. And yeah, they say, look, hey, if you ban out my tanks, I'm going to rock that clay. It's a champion once again that he's uh, you know quite well known for. Yeah, he's not going to go for the angry Alawi this time. It is going to be the <laughs> clay. Uh, it's got some champions still available, but you know, targeting Swiper has actually been a draft strategy in the past. So. Not too surprising to see that one again, but he gets his champion in first three. Doesn't let them get to the second ban phase to take what's left of his champion pool. Locks in that Kled, now they get to ban. Olaf is the initial ban here, so remove as many tanks, or I suppose really remove as many threats that cannot be CC'd out. Obviously, uh, level six with Ragnarok online, making it very hard for uh, Rare 7 to survive in this situation. It looks like they have a composition with the Kled at this stage that wants to go forward and get in your face and. Olaf will definitely uh, flip that script on them. Yeah, definitely. With someone like a, a Nautilus just being useless then against an Olaf, Misfortune being a, a very low mobility AD carry, of course you want to get rid of some threats like that. Croc, one of those uniquely talented players, however, on carry junglers. So I would say whatever they wanted to pick is still up and available in the jungle role for the side of the Chiefs, especially mm -hmm. when you've already got good damage uh, in Aphelios and good tanks already there in Tian and Korea CK with the Orn and the Braum. A carry definitely possible to be picked in the jungle role. Yeah, Croc has uh, had his most games on Jarvan and Elise with four games apiece right now. So definitely limiting what options that Orna want to go up against. But as you say, yeah, Croc has definitely been a stellar performer on this Chiefs roster. Definitely slotted in and showcased a lot of prowess. And the response is to deny now some of those powerful picks that Harry can achieve with the Azir and Cassiopeia. I mean, the crazy thing is, and it's probably not likely, but if you went for like a hyper carry mid laner and then for like a Sejuani jungle, it'd be pretty scary to have that composition completed here by the Chiefs. The mm -hmm. only risk is that it's a two carry comp, but Braum Sejuani is a nasty combo. And, you know, a bunch of crowd control to enable whatever the mid laner is. Uh, it could have been an Azir, right? But they banned it, which is why I don't think that would happen. But mm -hmm. it would have been nice. They go for the graves here. So give themselves some solid potential when those tanks jump in. A smoke screen can cause a little bit of disarray. And see some strong dueling potential there to continue this going forward motion. Uh, Chiefs going to have to showcase what they want to play here. They're going to have to reveal their hand with those solid laners. Kindred. Oh, okay. They could just do what I. <laughs> oh, you've called right. it. Is yeah, it going to happen? Right. Get your fingers crossed in chat right now. Is it going to happen? The well, said you want to have a carry drink. Locked. What are you going to pick mid? Maybe an Orianna. Uh, the risk is having no mobility against someone like a Kled. Uh, mm -hmm. Have to see where they go. 
Ari is the unconventional option, but something magic damage. Ari is most likely, given all the bands. There you go, I was going to say, Rise, Rise, he's played it a fair bit. Gives you the mobility, obviously, with the ultimate. And uh, has infinite scaling. Oh, okay, Ooh. that's like the least expected. It's going to be on mid then, from the looks of it. Very interesting. And this has always been something that we've always talked about, right? Be it that uh, Tien is more known, I suppose, as that carry style top laner. And that Claire doesn't necessarily have to sort of hold the weight of the damage responsibilities on his shoulders. He can definitely put a lot of that towards uh, both uh, Tien and Katsuri to you know, meet their mark. Well, things just got very different very quickly as the draft completed. You know, you've got the Orn flex to mid lane, and that actually mm. does give order the, the last pick for whatever they would like for Hayri. Uh, and they actually opt into giving him the Silas into the Orn. You know, it's a matchup that I would say it's one of the few that Silas really enjoys. Uh, mm -hmm. There's obviously kill threat there on both sides, but you can heal through it if you're the Silas. And you can definitely still be as useful as an Orn potentially with the ultimate steal as well. The only thing is obviously ornaments as you start to get those levels. But like this, this Chief's composition is an Aphilios and Tanky Boys. There is mm -hmm. just so many Tanky Boys to stand in front of the Aphilios. But then there's the Fiora, you know, that wild card style champion up in top lane and that could be a big difference maker you know if the fiora gets ahead then things become dangerous for the side of order to deal with it but at the same time like if the tanks fall behind early they're just a bunch of tanks that aren't tanky and order could run through them i think really what i'm noticing from this chief's draft so far is yes they have good engage themselves and great disengage to that same notion but you know you combine both the brahm and sejuani passive and you think look you know if they engage that is all i'm saying you know if they if they go in they have to be sure uh, sure as hell that you know when they're going in they're getting kills right because otherwise the punishment potential is just unreal yeah i think that like at the, like at, at the snowball is the biggest deal in this game for me for certain uh particularly what the chiefs put together you're right with order if they're looking to make those engages uh, there's actually a lot of good ultimates for a silas to steal it's a misfortune nautilus down in bottom lane as well so their team fighting is going to be strong mm -hmm. uh picking the right moments to engage is definitely going to be a big thing uh and that's also something worth pointing out that order played earlier today uh and one of the fights that they lost which consequentially was the entire game was choosing the wrong fight, choosing the wrong mm -hmm. target for the fight. And that was the game as a result. So you have to be super aware of that. Well, for the final time today, let's jump to a quick break, get ourselves ready or get up and we'll check out Chiefs. Take it on order.
Well, here we are for the final time today, jumping on to the rift. The order's second game, but Chiefs making their debut conveniently as a blue team on the blue side. Maybe that's a good luck charm. Who knows? Rusty, let's hey. kick it off. Bring the energy for the final time today. Who have you got your money bet on? We're just going to break that rule straight away. <laughs> We're not breaking the rule that we just set. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and predict the team. <laughs> what I will say is that to bring back the points that we made in draft, this is obviously it was a five minute break and some people might be just joining us. There's a lot of tanks on Chief's side. So if you miss the draft, you basically just miss them locking in a lot of tanks. We got to their last champion and I thought that maybe they would go for like an Orianna mid lane or, you know, a bit of magic damage to round out their composition. But instead they've opted to go for a Fiora split push. So it's very clear that they're looking for that 4-1 or maybe even just a 3-2 assignment where you have someone constantly roaming up to that top lane like an Ornn with a teleport to pressure and get TN snowballing. Because right now, Sniper versus TN, the armored titan versus the self-described armored sloth, um, <laughs> I think that's where the game is decided. And it's always that great narrative, right? They've gone one-on-one -on -one against each other in terms of matchups. And, uh, you know, these are, you know, it's like the master and the apprentice, you know, uh, once upon a time... TN was the prodigy underneath Swiper and learning, uh, you know, a lot from him. So there's definitely banter and good blood between them. So every game, there's always those narratives that we can keep an eye on. So definitely going to be a lot of pressure on them, I'm sure, internally between themselves to perform. But uh, as a team, yeah, Chiefs uh, would be the hotly tipped favorites here. And yeah, uh, the composition I mean, has a lot of tanks. It's crazy, right? It's funny that you say Master and Apprentice because that's definitely the narrative that people are going to run with. But when you look at these players, like it still has that relationship, but their styles are opposite. Like you, yes, you're not going to see Swiper running around playing Diana top lane, and you're probably not going to see Tian running around playing the Alawis and the Clets. So even though you know there was the experienced player and the rookie player learning behind him, their styles are completely different, and that's what makes this matchup when they play each other so like actually cool. Well, I mean, they've even, uh, what was it? There was a game where TN played the Cassiopeia in top lane. I believe it was against the set, wasn't it? And it was like, oh, how do you try and counter that set with his, uh, you know, shield? You know, just a slow burn with all the poison. Keep him kited, keep the poison online for the mo uh, movement speeds. There's this craziness like that. He has played it, but it wasn't into swipe. But they've played each other twice. One of them was Akali into set, where he was getting solo kills on the Akali. The second was Alawi into set, where Swipe was mm -hmm. Alawi was getting the solo kills. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like... You know, it's one of those inevitable fates of this top lane 1v1 is that someone's dying solo. It's just a question of who is it going to be. Bragging rights definitely on the cards here, more so maybe than the victory. Who knows? Uh, maybe pride is a very important factor at this uh, stage of the season. As Wayland's well, going to be hanging around by the shrub. He's uh, aware of the pathing that Croc may be taking, only going to utilize this situation to go through mid. Smoke screen goes down and... Keeping clear in check. We'll have that teleport to reset if need be, but Ayla's still hanging around Tribrush, waiting for Sejuani to reveal. Yeah, Harry definitely going to need himself a reset immediately. Can maybe get the Dark Seal, come back to lane, and we'll try and sustain against that Ornn. Uh, Graves looking for the gank mid, basically just to try and secure both Scuttle Crabs if possible. 
Uh, he will be able to do so from the looks of it, unless he is afraid of the Sejuani, who is doing a full clear and has actually successfully been able to get himself back to base after that full clear and go to top scuttle uncontested. Looks to be the uh, fantastic start for Croc here. Gonna have that first jungle item online as well, make it a little bit easier. Blue Smite is gonna be the name of the game here. And uh, just more CC, why not? Is If you need any more with this tanky composition. <laughs> Yeah, they, I don't think they need too much more CC than they already have. We should be looking perhaps at what are they going to use that CC for right now. Is we've already seen a bit of action in mid lane. You know, when these two trade against each other, it's very fight heavy, and the waves are, are building and crashing in each respective direction. So now is the moment where it pushes against order, and the Chiefs get the chance to invade Rome, play some deep vision if they would like. We'll see if they can spot only as he takes those crugs. Yep, they are going to stick around here. Sejuani deep in enemy territory. And uh, Richie under the nose of order saying you won't even try and contest this because Claire's pushing things in. Misfortune actually has gone for the Cold Blade as well, so looking for a lot of extra gold. And the same could be said for Katsuri, just picking up now too on the reset. Yeah, they've got some coals, some dark seals and, and things like that. So yeah, definitely being a little bit more greedy in their early itemization. No real necessity of a BF sword on either of these champions, though, as you can go the longsword builds. So I personally don't ever mind a cull, uh, especially with, like mentioned earlier, like the games have slowed down a lot except for last game. Uh, so I think that there's room for the smaller amounts of greed. And, you know, cull is one of those items that you mm -hmm. can say is greedy, but you don't really mean it. If it doesn't get punished, then it's just good. And if the game's slow and there's a lot more just farming for AD carries, which there is, then it's kind of just good. Isn't it interesting, right? Because at the start of the split, we were talking about why our teams so heavily uh, prioritizing the likes of Orna and we have some of the quickest games globally as a region, right? And now it seems to have gone the opposite of uh, games are very long, these picks now that scale up so great. We'll hit those three, four power spikes and uh, you know, Chiefs have always been known for this composition that hit that power spike, hit that moment in the game. So that's it. We're going for the team fight. Well, we're winning, but now got to rock with the Ornan mid. So weird things are taking place. And again, takes place in top lane two. Tien going to be the one to get jumped upon as Claire tanks the aggro, dismounts as well when Graves on hot pursuit. Salas is roaming as well. And now that's they're disproxying this wave as well. <laughs> that's the Ornn. On Denial, and that's a Robust, which did a fantastic job, quite honestly, but only is there when your health bar's that low, that's first blood. Yeah, very easy stuff there in the end. Uh, that was just Silas, of course, using the odd ultimate, so it looked funny in my head. I was like, don't know why Claire is engaging on Tan, but nevertheless, they get themselves the kills. The flash from Tan at the very last second was in an attempt to actually get the health vital proc as mid. He's Ooh. just dead. That's it. You uh, land the ult yourself and say, look, why did you try and steal mine? I can do it far better than you. The amount of brittle stacks and the deceiving strong nature of uh, of big old on there and uh, instantly evens it up. I mean, yeah, you, you use that ultimate in top lane. You have no mana. He basically never has mana in mid right now, Harry, as he has gone for the Merc Tread build, but at the time actually just had no potions and a dark seal. So being Oom, Claire's just going to look at you. Unsealed Spellbook hits Ignite. That's a kill window and very successfully. Uh oh, only in a lot of trouble right now. Oh, He's gonna actually have his red buff stolen away as well. Gonna be a three v two situation. Out comes the snowstorm, locking members in place. He's gonna pick up that kill. Harry looking to try Ooh. and trade things around, and he does get onto Tien. Evens things out again. Order, definitely not giving up without a fight here in these engagements. Yeah, Harry putting in some work there to make sure that was a one for one trade, and consider the cost of that one for one trade. That's the second death now for Tien, yeah. almost in a row. At the same time, that's that's now going to be time purchased by Swiper to farm that way to get himself into a comfortable position. And that's one of the two win conditions that's really present for the Chiefs, right? Like, they've got the Aphelios big carry as the game scales. They've got the Fiora split push. And now that split pusher is 0-2, eight minutes in, it becomes a little bit harder. Harry not going to show any signs of chilling in this game. Maybe emitting the chill onto his wards his opponent, who manages to get the slow proc across as he goes towards that turret. But does zone away the jungle, which means now Order turning their attention to the very first dragon. Won't have to worry about a smite steal. Yeah, not at all. Harry, honestly, 1v9ing this game right now, trying to keep his team as best he can. Uh, only has been farming, you know, just trying to stay ahead of the ball, but the Sejuani had that experience lead, had the control of mid lane. 
And unfortunately, yes, there was a solo death in there by Harry. But he's trying his absolute hardest to win elsewhere on the map, but that was an unfortunate side effect of that. Bot lane has been uh, pretty quiet, and to be expected, really, when you've uh, acquired the coal, you just want to farm away. And uh, the junglers have definitely recognized that and shown case their priority towards mid and top, which has been full of action. Yeah, no Herald looked at just yet. Something you'd expect to see very soon, of course, with only the one objective remaining uh, after the Drake has been taken. So I think maps may flip. You know, these bottom laners that we have seen just farming may actually start getting involved into the game, uh, particularly now they are hitting level six as well as, you know, Chiefs have already started the objective up and it has been seen by Order Vision. They'll probably contest this. The bot lane have disengaged. Miss Fortune obviously deceivingly fast with her movement speed as she runs on yeah. towards this one. Nautilus it's getting low. Up. Yeah, it's not going to happen. They're going to pick this one up and look to get a scuttle as well, but order a hot on the chase. That's going to be the start with Cled jumping on in. The scuttle doesn't even get completed down to 100, but the fight is looking very good as the Ornhorn comes That That's going to knock up three members of order. Can the turnaround effect take place here for Chiefs? Tien instantly turns the score sheet and saying I'm 0-2 but now I've got a kill on the ball but when he falls down again Brom with the shield, Brom with the protection and Harry falls on down as well, Croc is massive do you ever expect anything more from this player, the guy's machine and the bullet time bait as they walk towards the cliff wow yeah, Rare will force him to disengage at the very least using that ultimate there but unfortunately yeah, I mean that was just chaos wasn't it blinking health yeah. bars on the side of the chase but they still get the herald, they still get the summon they're going to use it in top lane, as Tian was the person who was able to take down Swiper. Probably going to be a few plays in top lane, if not the turret. We'll see this fight again, and obviously the teleport is coming in to save it. And two Fiora ultimates are what you're seeing on your screen. One of them was Heiri on the Silas. The other one was Tian successfully getting the kills onto Swiper. Now, no riposte, of course, and Ayla says, this is my moment, let's go in and make it happen. But that backfires, and they should have perhaps just disengaged, and then actually pretty close to getting a couple of kills there. Uh, was rare on the back end of it, but nevertheless, Chief's happy with that trade. Chief's will be happy with that trade, and uh, Croc is a monster right now. Uh, as I said before, you know, the guy, uh, definitely a beacon of hope, always able to find a lot of pressure on the map, always able to really sort of signify the term of jungle difference. The guy is uh, pretty crazy a lot of the time. It's on a champion like this that can really offer so much utility to his team, more protection, more ability for Katsuri and Tien to come online. Yeah, we have... Honestly, we've got a lot of space now for Katsuri to work. You know, the more kills that these tanks get, the easier it is to stand just behind the tanks and put down damage, right? And, you know, you could look at this and say, like, Silas is our win condition because he's the only person who's going to be dealing damage at X time in the game. But if the tanks in front of him are too fragile and he's not safe, then he's not dealing damage. So this is actually a very good position for the Chiefs. Of course, they'll need to start translating something to him eventually. Uh, but right now, they're in very good stead. You know, a tank ahead stays ahead. Claire is huge. He's starting to get close to those items, those ornaments. And said Rani, we'll see how he goes. Yeah, we're going to see another fight take place here. We've had the first one to join that party to make it a numbers advantage in order's favor. They're going to find a lot of damage here, forcing multiple members to disengage away. Katsuri down to half, and CK going to fall on down, but flashes away at the last second, baiting in the hook to hit on Claire instead. Who just bodies? He just takes down Nautilus. He does not care. And, well, that is a bullet time into the middle of nowhere. But regardless, Rare will take that because the Graves gets the kill in the end. And members are on critical health. Can he get the spread? Yes. Chase it. Get one more. Two more orders would have done it. Wow. It's uh, very close, Rusty. Yeah. And once again, lots of trades. Very extended trades. Things take a lot of time to happen because there's <laughs> just so many tanks. But Order are able to get some trade back. There's two people now gone, Claire, of course, who basically sacrificed himself uh, in the act of taking down an opponent. Uh, of course, has the flash, but it was a misfortune ultimate. It was a Grey's ultimate. The cones covered the entirety of the river, so there was no escape for him. We'll see how this starts once again. It was Croc caught. He has the ultimate. It's very tanky. And then at this point, they could disengage. Korea CK in trouble, and Claire says, take me instead, and actually runs over Ayla. And you know... They try and keep Claire alive, and that's one of the bigger mistakes that they'll make here. You know, they step up to the plate a little bit too far forwards, and misfortunes make it rain is all it takes to actually close that distance. And Rare I like how... to make sure it happens. <laughs> I like how the bullet timing explosion from um, 
uh, Graves as well, just completely covers up that AoE segment of the brush. Like, it doesn't matter where you try and juke, you're gonna get met with tons of bullets. It's pretty to watch that much is certain. Because now we've got the Drake up here, Skimmy, second Drake of the game, and Hayri has just taken away an on ultimate on the Silas, so order poised to maybe look for a fight. Order in the driving seat right now with the vision down and the first Drake in their possession. Gonna be a Cloud Drake they'll be looking to try and contest here as they find themselves in a choke spot. Bullet time isn't available just yet, but the engage takes place so far. Moonlight Vigil's trying to turn this fight on it's to give themselves some CC and some protection to try and disengage. Order not looking like this is going to be a desirable team fight right now. They are definitely running away. The protection of these beefy members just staying around and killing for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's just so hard to get through the Chiefs members. They were looking for the fight, perhaps here, Order. But Ayla is ultimately the one who dies. Chiefs will get themselves a kill. They'll get themselves the Drake. And unfortunately, once again for Order, it happens around the Dragon. A fight that they definitely didn't want in retrospect. Well, if the tanks were strong beforehand, they are getting ever closer to those uh, disgusting points with some fire cape completed already. Abyssal not too far away here for Claire's Orn. And the Sejuani sitting on a ton of gold, I'm sure, looking to try and get some items online as well. Let's see how this team fight all started out as uh, they set up turrets and definitely commanded that victory. And effectively, it's the supports that engage by hitting each other. Uh, Orn ultimate number one comes through there. That was actually Hayri. He wasn't able to hit R2 on that Orn ultimate. Now, of course, at the point that that happens, Ayla's already half health, already pretty much chunked out. And Braum has a bunch of other tanks to step up in his stead to make sure that that happens. So easy stuff there, honestly, in the end for the Chiefs. They weren't able to follow that Kled ultimate and look for an engage. They unfortunately just suffered at the hands of it. Yeah, a bit rough forward there, right? Because they were in the driving seat, uh, definitely starting off that Drake with a great position and decided, look, let's go for a team fight instead and uh, were met with a fair bit of punishment. It's uh, only a 1k gold difference at this stage. But uh, as you saw from that last team fight, very hard to break rank and get into that back line. Um, you know, with Claire obviously looking to try and really boast the mobility to get in there. Uh, too many tanks to really try and run past. Yeah, we're looking at... Uh... A couple of interesting points though, you know, like Harry's still pretty far ahead, 40 CS, and has got himself some of those kills. So like, even though there's been kills there for Claire, it's still a big Silas, and it's just hit level 11 as well. So those ultimates come up much more often. Starting to get some items as well. That's an engage. This is going to be a big power spike as Depth Charge goes up for Glacial Fissure. Shutdown gets achieved here right now by Harry, which is a big start to this team fight. The Rift Herald is still very low. Who's going to pick it up? We don't know just yet. We're going to see this team fight continue regardless as Claire jumps in with the Ornhorn himself to try and force the disengage. And it looks like Chiefs must have got that because Auto are defending it. Well, so, yeah. yeah. Braum, I think, is the one who's on the mission. We'll see. I don't know if anyone could get there. There he goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> he tried. Back, ah, back to recalling. They'll defend the Herald. The Herald was taken by Chiefs, but the, the eye wasn't picked up itself. So they've got no eye to crush. They've got no free turrets to take here, the Chiefs. Nothing actually happening from that skirmish in the end. Both tanks uh, basically running all, both supports really running in, chucking down their ultimates, finding huge value, and then saying, you know what, one kill, that's all right, let's disengage. Yeah, we're also like, you know, we were speaking about Hayri before when it comes to item spikes. Uh, we're getting closer for Ayla to, you know, to be that one tank effectively to stand in front of order and soak up damage. Once that stone plate is there, he'll at least live for a couple of extra seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. This is one of those games where, like, if you're Ayla and you're looking at the draft, you're most likely going to die, you know? The question is, how long can I survive for? And that's one of those big break points for him to be much more comfortable engaging those team fights, which is what Auto would be looking for. Oh, much like Rogue on Nautilus earlier today, he's very close to completing that stone plate, which will give him a lot of durability. Stop what's already been used to ensure that he can stay around and emit as much pressure and peel with that passive route. Stone plate uh, won't be too far off now as he continues to level up his uh, ADC and protection in mid lane. You know, generally speaking, today Order have been very good with their side lanes and, and their farming uh, against their respective opponents. You can still see some good CS leads uh, across the board. They did this last game as well. Swiper on his Renekton had a pretty good CS lead. Uh, a lot of the concerns for me have just been the executions around Drakes and team fights. But mm -hmm. even that last one that happened at the Herald looked pretty promising for Order. Realistically, it's just that they didn't get the Herald. 
they still won the fight and are able to body chiefs out from getting the eye. And it's fights like that that you need to see replicated. Absolutely. And uh, have to keep a close eye on Rare as well, who's also netting himself a small CS advantage. Around about 30 at this stage, soon to be 20. And he's going to net himself a bounty as a result from the structural benefits too. <laughs> moment of calm as we look at Dead just casually zoning away Swiper. Back to the action and loud noises though. Harry of course gonna get himself a side lane turret. Harry does it love himself a side lane full stop. This is a concern though. You know, it's not the Blade of the Ruin King build for Fiora, but Ravenous Hydra also got some positive changes, some extra healing, some extra tier mat range. Mm-hmm. It's a thing that a Fiora very much likes and getting ever closer to that Trinity Force, which is spike number two of I cannot deal with you. Yeah, it becomes gross at that stage and you sort of start to wonder how can you actually match in the side lane, maybe breaking open that base and always threatening the likes of trying to take down an inhibitor when a fight takes place in mid lane, which is what Chiefs are potentially sniffing at. They would have had a good flanking angle, but the God must be significant enough for Tien to go back for a base, and there it is. Trinity Force now online. A massive power spike for the Sphiora. And it was mentioned before, uh, even just after the draft, like how do the Chiefs use this composition of just innumerable tanks to win the game? Of course, that was a one ultimate block by Korea CK there. Is hold that thought. Hold engaged. that thought indeed. Yep, Cloud's going to jump straight into the backline, capturing three Mims in place. Bullet time zoning out multiple Mims as Claire finds Rare up against a wall. And he's going to get that stun, doing basically half of his health bar. Pops to summon a heal to survive as they disengage through this bush. Croc is not even there. He's run away and Chiefs are just steamrolling this one. They are getting kill after kill. A double kill with that power spike. If you were scared of Fiora, well, you should be with these items in possession. They're oh, not done God. there just yet. They want more. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some crazy flashes under the towers, but they show restraint and they peel away to pick up their second Drake. At what point does it become comedy <laughs> that the dragon has spawned an order of lost a team fight almost immediately and that they'll lose the objective again? As Chiefs, they will get some further kills. They'll be able to out team fight their opponents this time, but order were once again in the river looking for this fight and they don't get the executional victory that perhaps they were looking for as order once again for a little bit further behind in those objectives. Absolutely hurts. You know, you can see the game plan, what they're trying to do, and it, you'd imagine, right, it is a good play to get some kills, get yourself asserted towards that dragon pit, but like the matter is, they are finding it incredibly hard to try and break through and just clear single-handedly, if you watch this replay, just takes out Rare from the side. Yeah, and Croc... Throws out his ultimate first. Ayla was already pretty low before this, so just keep that in mind. The Misfortune ultimate, unfortunately, doesn't really find the targets, and Claire is already on a flank. You know, the rest of Order are going into the enemy jungle while Claire is standing next to Rare, saying, this is delicious, let me have a go. And then, there you go, one kill. Tien's able to give everybody health back from that Fiora ultimate. I think we're back. We're not done yet. We want more. And Rare's gone again. Yep, that's his first death in this game. And yeah, the uh, immobility is getting punished right now. No flash, no chance to disengage from that situation. Chiefs execute and uh, execute flawlessly as they now will be able to successfully break through mid lane. Unless nice Order just decides they want to force this team fight out. That's a lot of CC and Claire is going to fall on down. Claire wasn't able to move for about seven weeks as Hayri <laughs> still looking. Oh, he still wants it. Ayla finds the flash hook. He's going to chase on through. Cled with the oh, vision diving. and Cled with the speed. It's Sivir 2.0 and Bruiser form. They find oh. a double kill. Can they get the triple? Can they really stem the bleeding? They are taking so much turret damage. And Katsuri on 10% health does a Filios things. And between him and Tien, stem the aggression that was coming out of order there. Just the briefest of moments, I wanted to just erupt and say, Harry is the king. <laughs> And then suddenly Katsuri lives on 100 HP and Tien's yep. there to clean up kills as well. We'll see what happens here as Croc does just find the mark. Aphelios Ultimate was also thrown on there. Rare is just dead. But then you want to disengage. Now just imagine you're Claire. You're like, I've come on Ultimate. Maybe we can hit the turret. And then Hayri locks you down after Ayla locks you down. And then he throws a Sejuani Ultimate onto you. And you just... One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. Oh, I'm already dead to the turret. The da like that's <laughs> dirty. And then Harry, of course, they want to follow it through with all the hooks that follow afterwards. I mean, you're seeing the strength in order in this fight, right? Like you're seeing what they're capable of. 
But then at the same time, a teleport comes through from Tiered, and you're able to see what they're capable of as they re-engage with their opponents. And it gives you a brief window, right, of how strong this composition can be when the structures are down. You know, if those turrets aren't there, very different story, obviously. But, you know, the fact of this uh, matter is this composition has so much ability to chase on you like that and really bully out. Okay, sure, you have a lot of tanks that can clump up together, but when you split like that, you know, very different story. And here we go once again. We've got the Orn Ultimate taken by Harry on the Silas. So if ever there was a time that we're going to start threatening for these towers around the map would be now. Hook's on. Hook is on indeed. A lot of damage going in towards Claire, who's going to turn his tide around, press R2 and get a three-man knockup. <laughs> Moonlight Vigil comes out. That completely zones out the members as they just chase on through regardless. Harry wants to be a hero. He wants to go for the one before. Turrets aren't enough. He wants a second. He wants kills. And uh, that's a nice little donation into the pocket of Katsuri. Yeah, you could be happy with the turret, and Harry decided that one step too far is not enough and goes about 17 steps too far forwards. So it's just caught by himself. TN also winning oh, wow. the game, bottom lane, it is worth noting. Swiper sees this and says, well, I can't fight him. We'll see how this trade happens. If it is just a transaction of an inhibitor for trying to push him away. The numbers game is how Swiper's playing this. And this is what we were so scared of, right? From the very moment they were able to get those two turrets in the bot lane and just always be that threat to try and take this down. Clay gonna pop the ultimate, gonna jump on in with rare, and they are just gonna go in for the, the 1v4 face yeah. check. There was a they world where TN baited that as well, you have to remember. Swiper. Oh my, Swiper doesn't care. He just wants They're to chase hunting. his members down. It's a 3v5 chase down. There's a teleport. And Chief is scared. The teleport comes in. Harry's going to look to try and make something happen. Two men CC locked in place right now. Ayla going to jump into the spike, but Rare finds a kill. And same could be said for Harry as well. Only Fiora on the board. And now Fiora's ramping up. Finds a double kill. Still living, still healthy. Down to half, down to a third, down to death. Gone as only finds the shutdown. This is a situation where there is no Drake, Rusty, and Order win a team fight. There's no dragon, no problem for order. Of course, they might actually be able to pick that one up if they would like. They're moving over to the Baron instead, 25 minutes into this one only, and Hayri are the damage source. So we'll see how they go as a three man taking this one down. They just kept chasing Skimmy. They just kept going. And eventually, I mean, if you pick 27 fights in the same location on the map, all it takes is for one of them to work close 20 minutes, I suppose. And you know, it's all about killing the damage threats. Katsuri is threat number one. It cops the Sejuani ultimate. Number two is Tien. When they're both gone, well, then there's no one left to kill you, right? So you just got a bunch of tanks in a dream. And it's a hopeless dream. As, speaking oh, of hopeless no. dreams. <laughs> they started the Baron. It gets down to half. The curse continues. Rusty looks so damn good. The confidence they really brought to the rift by chasing members down. And what was a 2v4, then a 3v5, and then into a beautiful team fight. The bullet time, really. For me, it was fantastic. Sure, red dropped on down, but the amount of value it found before you fell, and then all undone by the uh, the Baron disengage. <laughs> you all thought that this was a slow paced day. You all <laughs> came into this, and you were like three games of 37 minutes, no kills, handshake League of Legends. Screw that, man. It's 10:20 at night. It's time to get loose. <laughs> <laughs> This is pent up anger by not going to the gym. They're going to get a <laughs> full on workout with their mouse and keyboard in this game, pressing the button. We have a quota to keep here, Skibby, on the <laughs> I think this is, uh, in this game alone, this accounts for all the kills we've had in the day. <laughs> exactly. Making up for lost time. We've got a 7 2 Graves, by the way, on the side of Order. So a big carry over there. Misfortune always relevant. Silas, while he's only 337, still in a very strong position, has his items. And Swiper, while he is the one that is 0 4, and whilst Ayla is also 0 4, they're still pretty tanky naturally. You know, Kled uses his ultimate, gets a massive shield. Nautilus is Nautilus, and once he has that stone plate activated, will back up and available, lives for a while. So I'd say that they've got money all the right Ooh. places. That was That's a flash for flash. Good flash. You take them as Ayla, as that's going to be Katsuri being quite uh, immobile now. And yeah, Baron obviously is available. Chiefs do now have two Ocean Dragons to the name, so a fair bit of sustain would be a big disaster if Chiefs were able to pick that up as a soul tube. And now round number two. Yeah, they've got more people here this time. They actually have damage, and you can see TN on your screen. Order. Yeah. Best case scenario, they force the teleport out of TN, they disengage. They can come back to fight another day because it gets rid of a win condition of the Chiefs. For the Chiefs. What are they going to do? 
What is the health on that Baron right now? We can't see, but Tien's going for that backdoor. Engage instead. He doesn't seem to care. The Baron goes down. The inhibitor falls as well. A trade for trade. Objective for structural impact. Swipe is zoned away. Croc is chasing on with that passive, and he's going to find that execution. They are now looking to try and deny as many Baron buffs as possible. They're going to find a second kill eventually as Katsuri makes light work of Ayla. And, well, you know, with a inspired Fiora <laughs> banging on your Nexus door, this could not have gone more worse again. Yes, you got the Baron, but at what cost? I don't think any member at this stage is going to survive to even utilize it. <laughs> Can you imagine just being only in that situation, right? You're in Graves, you're 7-2, and running you down is a Sejuani or Brawl. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just die slowly. It takes 30 seconds, but eventually you're going to fall. That's so sad. That is just so depressing. <laughs> Scream at your keyboard, eh? Like, why am I so kill? fed? I Yo, can't do I mean, anything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Is this loss? Like, it's, it's such a bad place to... Oh, man. I'm losing it. Just watching this. I'm glad you are, mate, because we've had six games like this today of just confusion and overall entertainment. And people, I've seen them in Twitch that saying, why on earth are games being played right now? Is this a live game? Is this a replay? No, this is definitely live. This is Super Week. This is the one, well, this is one of four, right? Next week and then the weekend afterwards. Sorry, sorry tomorrow and next weekend. Just back to back. Plenty of games to stem your thirst, to quench your appetite. And uh, if they're all going to be like this, Rusty, we might go mad. Uh, absolutely. I can tell you with absolute certainty that they're all like this. if they're all like this, we'll go mad. But we do have a moment to actually slow the pace of this game down. Three dragons for Chiefs on Soul Point, but they've no. still got a Baron right now. We're not allowed to slow it down, Rusty. We have to go. All we have is My a bad. go, go, go My button. Bad. WASD, we're playing FPS now in a MOBA as the cocoon lands. Sorry, in the cocoon, it's the snowstorm. It's everything that just lands in place to CC you. <laughs> it does the same thing as what I'm trying to say, but they disengage the glacial fissure. And they hold... Well, they hold strong in mid. Um, well, Croc is, he doesn't care, he is chasing, clears the Redemption to, well. to deal damage Redemption. to them, they're gonna cled ult to safety here, Skibby. They're just what gonna can absolutely they do? sprint. Only, only once again is on the flank and feels like, why me? Why can I not Ooh. emit anything Ooh. on this game? Goes for the ultimate, gets the disengage knockback. But, you know, their base is being threatened right now, as in Super Minions threaten a bot inhibitor. It's quarantine, day six. We're playing only tank compositions now, just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many spells are being thrown at each other. There is a Silas who is stealing tank spells, throwing them back at the tanks. Like, this is League of Legends in its finest form. You missed the soundbite moment there, Rusty. You've got to say, this is peak League of Legends right now. As we turn our attention towards mid lane, and Korea CK will fall on down despite it. There is no time to analyze, no time to lag, as I can't see what's going on the screen right now. But yes, I can. Again, Tien now showing face in the top lane. He's going to work towards a second inhibitor and swipe out. Oh, and five. Rough, rough time. Going to recall uh, the request of Harry to join in and make it a 2v1. Yeah, and he's gone. It's, it's rough. I don't know what to say. It buys so much time and now Ocean Soul. Sienna's teleport. They're engaging here. They are. When do I get a chance to breathe? When do I get a chance to figure out what is going on in this game? It's not going to be a Baron. Getsuri so damn low. Going to utilize the shield that gets given to him as Harry Jaws on his fancy feet. Oh, that healing what, though. Using the Moonlight Vigil from that Scythe Dagger, getting him all the health back to get back into this game. Harry finally gets that shut down, but gets met by two tanks as a result, and this is where TA really starts to thrive, just oh, dashing on in. Oh, the Ocean Dragon slowed in. The Ocean Dragon is going to kill Ray, who got his for the bullet time in the push. I love it. It was a great attempt. But, oh, the rusty. cost, the cost was much. high, Skibby. But the Ocean Stole still belongs to the Chiefs in the end. They've got their split pushing Fiora with an Ocean Soul. And I don't know how Order bring this one back, considering that. That's going to be the TP in now, as they look to secure this game. Respawn time is oh, 10 to 15 seconds. That's going to be a rough one, definitely, as they are now looking to Ooh, take down the six attempts. The yeah, they're definitely going to go for the end right Five now. Chiefs angry. want the victory. Glacial Fissure going out once again. A lot of these members in place to do as much damage as they can. Tien going to try and do as much as he can to really assist in this team fight no right now. And no one takes damage quite rightly. A three-man knock-up is quite huge where terrain comes into effect. And Harry, the one before King, doesn't have enough.
enough sustain to survive in that situation. Nobody from Chiefs will fall. Ocean Soul OP. Disengage. He's one there after. Dude, he spawned as well. <laughs> <laughs> if anything else could happen in this game, it happened right now. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Katsuri is here. They're re engaging. They are. They are absolutely looking for this one. Tien doesn't care about the team fight. He wants to go for the inhibitor, but now turns his attention towards that team fight. Katsuri gets the trade onto the ADC opponent. Triple kill. A quadra kill because inhibitors count as a member of this roster. It falls on down. They're going to go for the Nexus. They're going to complete the game. Chiefs fight a much needed victory. That was absolutely wild, League of Legends. That's what that was. There was so much fighting, but so many tanks and crowd control everywhere that it's just really hard to know what's going on until somebody actually dies. In the end, it's fair to say that that Fiora proved to be just a little bit too much for their opponents of Order to deal with here as the Chiefs do find themselves with the victory in the end. And Order, unfortunately, do find themselves with the 0-2 week. The cast okay. always felt comical by the end of that, right? Because we are like joking our way through that one. I'm just like, what on earth is going on? Uh, do I get a chance to even stop and breathe? No, it's just go, 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 go. Action, action, action. All the aggression you'd want to close out a night. And um, I think, yeah, you perfectly summed it up when you said this is peak League Legends. Yeah, I mean, it was it was nice. It felt like we hit the quota of aggressiveness uh, after mm -hmm. that one, but there's still a lot of you know replicable issues there for the side of order. You know, these, these Drake team fights going sideways for them. Unfortunately, yeah. it is a consistent thing that you could note from today's games. But in saying that, they, they still had to play the two top teams, effectively today, two of the three top teams order. So this is not the, the day that you come in and say, we're going to 2-0. This is the day mm -hmm. that you come into and say, we want to be fourth. Let's try and get the 2-0. Well, that's enough of us talking, uh, Rusty. So let's bring back the boys, Nick Boy and Spawn, to share their thoughts on that final game of the day. I mean, look, I could not agree more. It's definitely enough of Skimmy talking. He's been at it for six and a half hours. The man <laughs> is a monster. Well done, buddy. Well done. Thank you, bro. Uh, and I'm well dead. done there two Chiefs. Uh, I mean, the end of the day kind of rounded out how we were expecting on paper. The first three to four games, absolutely bananas. A hell of a way uh, to start off our Super Week. Uh, Spawn all games aside how are you did you enjoy tonight yeah absolutely i think uh I, I kind of want to echo the sentiments we had some really slow games and then obviously order and chiefs just felt like a skill check was in order uh and they, they just went at it hammer and tongue so i think you know people that stuck with us for the whole six and a half hours were rewarded with a really bloody i guess more traditional post game rusty like if you could call it yeah. that because that, that is certainly a lot more fighting and that's what we're used to Absolutely, bringing it back to aggressive League of Legends. I mean, it's always something that you want to see from Oceanic players because the skill checks to me are the most exciting things. Uh, the most exciting thing to me is just imagining what Rusty is doing right now because we haven't seen him <laughs> in about six hours uh, and anything could be going on behind that one. I hour. currently have uh, no clothes on, Nick. You thought there was That's no pants at the start. But I would I, love I to so see him turn his here. webcam on and he just disconnects as a result. <laughs> <laughs> just lags out trying to talk. <laughs> it has... It has been a very uh, enjoyable weekend. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Let's take a look back at the games that were and the results we got. Uh, game number one, Pentanet versus GG. Uh, Pentanet, GG versus Avant, sorry. Avant taking out the win there in the first surprise of the day. And then it was Gravitas taking down Die Wolves uh, for game number two, Mammoth crushing Pentanet uh, for game three, <laughs> Dire Wolves taking out order for game four, and then things have got back on track relatively with Legacy, uh, not giving Mammoth much of a chance for game five. And finally, Chiefs and Order just whacking each other with sticks until Chiefs came out on top for game six. Uh, it's been a hell of a broadcast, but we have much more League of Legends for you tomorrow. Let's take a look oh, at the no. games we've got coming up. <laughs> six more. Order for game number one. Chiefs taking on Gravitas for Game 2, Mammoth in order for Game 3, Gravitas versus Pentanet.gg Game 4, the Chiefs and Mammoth for Game 5, and Legacy versus Die Wolves for Game 6. Boys, as if you couldn't get enough host League of Legends, what game are we most excited about tomorrow? I mean, number 6. Has to be. Has to be number yeah. 6. Legacy versus Die Wolves? If you're not excited for that one, I actually did not you're remember not... what any other game was. I was too excited for that one. If you... If you're not excited about that one, you're not excited about the OPL rights, Kimmy. You're not, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you're not looking at the game and thinking what on earth is happening in the green camp, um, yeah, 50 Shades of Green. That's uh, the narrative I'm going back to again.
See, I'm kind of the <laughs> That's opposite. That's very nice. I just, I really want to see these teams that are still yet to lock their playoff spot. And you'd have to think that if Order and Pentanet go winless tomorrow, especially with the teams that they're playing, I don't even know who to call favorites to make playoffs. Because at the start of today, you would have said, yeah, Order and Pentanet should get there. Gravitas with Pabu, it's a nice upgrade, but can they really make it work? Avant, they had mm-hmm. one good game because they really make it work. But those two teams still look really good. And Order and Pentanet are a collective 0-4 on the day, which does not instill confidence into the general managers trying to make playoffs right now, dude. Uh, no, it does not instill confidence at all. You've got the smile of a man who is is trying to not cry. Um, but that also could be because you burnt out your retinas a couple of hours ago and you have no idea actually what is going on. Um, uh, I'm just seeing in the chat, uh, Nick seems lower energy than usual. Uh, is Nick okay? Why is Nick so quiet? It's because I, I literally have a child asleep on the other side of that wall and a child asleep up there so i am i'm trying to figure out the level at which i can get so far tonight has been good so we can up it again tomorrow night we'll see how it goes spawn your Count question twitch chat that is that is a bedroom for nick a bedroom for nick's <laughs> one child a bedroom for nick's <laughs> other child a guest bedroom this is a mansion we could all hold up for the coronavirus <laughs> isolation in nick's house i'm telling you find out where this bed lives he has got the goods. I bet you he has a ton of toilet paper as well. Yeah. Um, I, I will bring my toilet. I, you know what? Tomorrow I will put my toilet paper on the bed and you will look upon it and you will weep. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for hanging out. It's been a super enjoyable <laughs> night. Uh, we're going to be continuing broadcasting from our homes for the foreseeable future. Who knows how long this thing could go on? And more importantly, who knows how long that this actually becomes the best way to cast League of Legends, the most comfortable way, and we just never return to that studio. Uh, so you can hold up there as well if you're looking for a place to stay. Uh, uh, I have been Nick Boy. We've got Spawn, Skimmy, and Rusty. Rusty, are you still there? I am. I'm just still looking up at you with a Wombat telling me what to do. There you go. That's all we need. Skimmy, thank you very much for all your hard work today. Thank you, bro. We'll get through it. More water, more lozenges. We're rock and roll. Spawn, I'm locking you outside of my house for the apocalypse. Thank God we three quarters of us all have beds behind us because it is time to get some shut eye. It is 10.36. <laughs> it's been a hell of a night. We're coming back tomorrow for more OPL. We'll see you guys then. <laughs> Nanga. <laughs>